Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be going through the first little bit of the solo adventure provided uh, for the Starfinder Beginner Box. So this can be found in the Hero's Handbook. And uh, the Beginner Box, if you're not 100% familiar with it, I did do a video review on it. But it's essentially a starter set uh, for the Starfinder role-playing game that has a more stripped down and sort of simplified version of the rule set. And it's geared mainly towards people that are new to either RPGs in general, or at least certainly new to the Starfinder uh, world and system and mechanics and things like that. Um, I really love the set. I think it's a really, uh, really great box. And uh, for you know, forty dollars US uh, for the amount of things that you get in it, it's just a great bargain in, in my opinion for everything that's in there. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, you can check out the video. I'll try to have something you can click on. Uh, at the end of this. But inside of the Heroes book, so this is sort of like the player's uh, guide or the, the player's rule book here, uh, there was a solo adventure. So if you buy this and you can't get a group together to run a game for, then you can still at least get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, it also sort of works like a tutorial to help explain the mechanics to you. So it's one of those things that if you are actually new to role-playing games in general, you've never really played <clears throat> things like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or even Starfinder before this or other things like Dragon Age, uh, the Star Wars one, there's a whole bunch of them out there, but if you're new this will sort of give you an idea of how to uh, how the, the core mechanics of this system at least work. Uh, so what we're gonna do, I've got some things set up here already. Uh, first thing I've got a pencil and piece of paper uh, which is something that they recommended. I'm just gonna move some other stuff off to this side here. You don't need to see like the, the, pen, the, the pencil and paper for the purpose of this video, but I'm sure there's going to have to be things I'm going to keep track of. Uh, to make this a little bit more visually interesting, I also decided to draw stuff out on a grid, just so you can kind of see what's going on instead of just hearing uh, my, you know, blandly monotone voice uh, throughout the entirety and have nothing visual to look at. Uh, so I got this here. I just, I didn't actually read through, so I don't really know what the adventure itself is like. I just read through the first, um, the first little bit to, before I get to actually make a choice, uh, just to sort of get an idea of what the setup would be uh, for me going forward. So I can, you know, draw it out and have the miniatures. I just have the indication uh, where north is and uh, things along those lines. So let's just go ahead and crack open the hero's handbook here. Uh, the solo adventure is entitled uh, Scoundrels in the Spike. The Spike is a part of Absalon Station and it just sort of gives you a little bit of things that you're going to need here. So it says to play you need a piece of scratch paper, a pencil, and the dice that come in the beginner box. I'm actually using uh, other set of dice because I'm keeping the set of dice that came with the set sealed because I already have a, uh, a black set of dice with white numbers already opened. So there's no point in me having like another one for that. Uh, and that's basically it. So to begin, you read entry one, follow its instructions. Most entries will tell you to go to another entry or give you several choices. Read only, or only read the entries uh, that you're instructed to read. Your choices will determine whether the character you play lives or dies during the course of this science fantasy adventure. Choose wisely. So like I said, I'm, I'm not going to go through the entire thing. I'll probably just go through the first maybe two or three choices at max, uh, probably just the first one or two, uh, because I don't want to spoil too, too much. But anyway, uh, it also shows that you need some dice here. So it has a D4, D6, D8, and D20, which are necessary. And I just so happen to have my D4, D6, D8, and D20 here right in front of me. So um, this is the character that you're playing here. So that's sort of what they look like. Kind of reminds me of that scar over his eye. It kind of reminds me of Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 3. Um, don't know why, I guess maybe it's just the way that that scar looks. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to show the actual uh, book itself. I'm going through this, I'm just going to read uh, through and we'll sort of go from there. So let's just sort of adjust this just a little bit. Alright, so let's uh, start with uh, option number one here. Uh, so it reads as follows. It says, you are a hardy soldier from Absalon Station, a huge space station that is the undisputed hub of trade and governance among the allied planets known as the Pact Worlds. Your family hails from a place called Downlow, a working class neighborhood in the Spike that extends below the station's radial plane. Life in the Spike is hard scrabble. Gangs pull the strings behind everything from neon lit credit lenders to seemingly reputable shops. 
You've always dreamed of leading a life of adventure. However, uh, and you're, I mean, you've always dreamed of leading a life of adventure, however, and you're a mean shot uh, with your semi-auto pistol. Uh, you've sought out the Starfinder Society for a chance at gainful employment that might take you across the solar system or even beyond. From headquarters in the nearby Longspire complex, these adventurers and scholars eager, eagerly accept you into their ranks. Your first assignment has just pinged into your data pad uh, from the office of First Seeker uh, Luaze uh, Elsebo, and the names are weird, so that's a thing about Starfinder, uh, so just bear with me when it comes to that. Uh, she wants you to venture into an abandoned maintenance corridor in the Spike, not far from your home turf, to investigate reports of prowling dangers. Station technicians need to access the corridor to conduct repairs, but they can't risk falling through broken grates or being attacked by lurking pests, and so the maintenance contractor has asked the Starfinders for help. Excitement fills you since this is your chance to prove yourself to the Starfinder Society. Plus, if you can thwart any threats in the corridors, the Society will reward you with 250 credits. And in brackets it says the standard unit of digital currency in the Pact Worlds. Uh, and, you've cleared, uh, and you're cleared to keep any useful items you find along the way. You holster your semi-auto pistol, sheathe your tactical baton, smooth your second skin armor, and head toward the coordinates on the data pad. Soon you're outside the flickering corridors of the maintenance halls. Uh, so this gives us our option here now, so we'll just sort of go back here. And it says to gather up your courage and head down the halls, go to entry number two. So that's what we're going to do. So entry number two has us going into, I, I drew it as a room, but that's going to be fine. Uh, so it says, before you stretches an eerily empty chamber made of rusty metal. Cardboard boxes filled with smashed electronic parts line the room's walls, and from the ceiling hang clumps of wires, a few of them dripping colorful fluids. It's clear this place is in dire need of repair, and it's likely the ways forward aren't safe. You pull your flashlight from your pack, and then you sweep its light across the corridor. The flashlight illuminates two hallways, one trailing away from the main room, one heading to the north, and the other leading to the east. So far, there's no sign of trouble, but you know it's always best to be prepared. You draw your semi-auto pistol from its holster, fix your flashlight under its barrel, and cautiously advance. So, we've got two different options here again. So it says, head down the hallway to the north, go to entry number three. Head down the hallway to the east, go to entry number seven. So I think I'm going to go uh, north. I think that's just the, the easiest uh, way because that takes us directly to option number three. Uh, so let me just have a quick look here. All right, I'm just gonna draw in, basically I think it just opens into like another area. So again, these are meant to be corridors, but I'm just gonna draw them as rooms because that's easiest. All right, I'm just gonna pan up a little bit there. I'm gonna move our character into the northern section. There's no actual map in the book either. This is all just purely uh, read out. So, uh, we went north, so that's option number three, or entry number three. Uh, and entry number three says, if it is your first time here, continue reading. If you've explored, uh, if you explored here before, go to entry number 12. So this is our first time here. Uh, so it says, as your eyes adjust to the illuminated gloom, you see movement in this chamber behind a particularly bulky box full of broken digital signboards. Uh, from behind the box springs a nasty creature, a space goblin, short and green with razor like or with teeth like razors set into its oblong head. The goblin is holding a dented pistol held together with tacky putty and string. Uh, it cackles with glee as it levels its weapon straight at you. So we have get it to focus. We have Space Goblin, so we're just going to put Space Goblin there, and it's actually the exact same image that we have here, only mirrored. Uh, so now we move into, this is a combat situation, so just reading through uh, the description, it says, you are now in combat. You know the Goblin means to kill you. 
and that you must defeat it before you can continue through the corridors. Both you and the goblin take turns shooting at each other. Make attack rolls by rolling a 20-sided die, or d20 for short, so we got that here. Uh, adding your attack bonus, see below. If the total is equal to or greater than the goblin's armor class, or AC for short, uh, then the attack is a hit and deals damage. Each time you hit, you determine damage by rolling the number of dice listed for the weapon you're using, and then subtract that amount from the goblin's hit points, or HP to be abbreviated. To beat the goblin, you must reduce its uh, hit points to zero. The goblin will make attacks the same way against your armor class, reducing your hit points when it hits. Uh, so here we have our combat information. So our base attack bonus, or our attack bonus, is plus four. Our semi-auto pistol damage is 1d4. Our hit points are 14, and our armor class is 15. The Space Goblin uh, has a plus 3 bonus to hit. Uh, has a does 1d4. Has a 12 armor class, and has 5 hit points. So odds are we're going to um, uh, we're going to end up hopefully winning here. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, so it says. We'll just continue reading here until we get to the uh, the results sort of part. So it says, combat occurs in rounds. In each round, both you and the Space Goblin get to make one attack. You go first in each round. Roll a d20, add your attack bonus of plus 4 to the result. Uh, and if it, it equals or exceeds 12, you hit. Uh, I get to roll a d4 to see how much damage is dealt to the Goblin. And then I just have the, the scrap paper here. Uh, then the Goblin shoots you. Roll a d20, add its plus, bonus of plus 3. So we just keep doing that until one of us is reduced to zero. So, I'm just going to make a quick note of some of these things here. So, to hit, plus four, 1d4, AC is 15, and HP is 14, and then the Goblin has a to hit of plus three, for 1d4, AC 12, oh. and 5 HP. Alright, so let's go ahead and make our first attack. I'm just going to set this book back down when we do that. So, uh, as the hero, we get to go first. We have our d20 here. Uh, I have plus 4, so to hit the goblin's armor class, I just need to roll an 8 or higher. And hopefully this will show up nice. All right, and that is, we'll just zoom in here so you can see. So that is a 17, that is a hit. So we roll our D4. Um, the ones that come with the with the beginner box, I believe their numbers are on the bottom, uh, but this one has a number at the top. Goblin has five hit points, so I can't kill him with one shot, but we'll see how much we do to it. And I actually rolled four. So the Goblin is reduced to one HP. But now, the goblin has a turn to attack me, so it'll do that. It gets plus 3 and needs to roll a 12 or higher to hit. And I actually rolled an 8, so we'll just hit again, zoom in a little bit. So it actually missed, so that means the first round is over. We're going to go into the second round, so I make my attack again, uh, plus 4. <laughs> and uh, this is not how I normally roll. Um, the 8 was, but this isn't, but I actually rolled uh, 17 again. So basically, because I do a minimum of one damage, which is actually what I rolled, uh, I still reduced the goblin to zero hit points. So I basically, I come in the room, the goblin jumps out, I shoot him, he shoots at me, I dodge, and then I fire back and finish it off. So the goblin has been defeated. We're just going to read the next entry, and that'll probably be the, where we leave it off, I think. Like I said, I don't want to spoil too, too much of this, because I do think the idea of the, uh, the solo adventure is pretty cool. But we have our results. So, it says, uh, if the Space Goblin's hit point total is zero, you have defeated the Goblin, go to entry number 11. And if it defeated us, we would have gone to entry 10. So we're just going to go to entry number 11. All right, so we have entry number 11 here, uh, which reads, uh, with a final deft maneuver, your semi-auto pistol sends a bullet right through the space goblin's heart. Oh, it's kind of harsh. Uh, the goblin's cackle turns into a shocked wheeze as the creature slumps against the corridor wall, dead. Rummaging through its tattered station wear pockets, 
you find a small aluminum vial with a gel cap pill etched into on or sorry etched on its cap. This must be a healing serum. Any damage the goblin dealt to you remains. Make sure you note your current hit points so it missed me, it didn't take any damage. Uh, you can drink the healing serum at any time during this adventure to regain eight hit points. Note that you cannot exceed your maximum. Uh, if you use this serum during combat, however, you must drink it instead of taking an attack. This means that the monster will get to attack you twice in a row. Uh, me, uh, write healing serum plus 8 HP on your scratch paper and cross it out when you use it. Uh, looking around, you see there's another short hallway leading deeper into the maintenance corridor. Uh, so... Uh, we can, so our options are, we can go deeper, so let's just move that, I'll just move him for now, slide this down a little bit, so basically this keeps going, so what I'll probably do is just draw in one more room, or I can go back and explore uh, where I was before and take the eastern uh, route. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go north. I will uh, just continue following the corridor and um, then I will basically have that be the last thing that I do. So uh, it says if you want to make your way deeper uh, into the corridor go to entry number four. Uh, so that's what I want to do. All right. Uh, so, entry number four uh, states, as you emerge into the, oh, let's put ourselves in that last, or that other room. It says, as you emerge into the maintenance corridor's next chamber, a sickly yellow glow hits your peripheral vision. In the corner, some sort of control hub stretches from floor to ceiling, covered in display screens and complicated control panels. The control hub is badly malfunctioning. Uh, if the jaundice miasma hanging about it like a heavy fog is any indication, another sign the corridor systems are long overdue for repair. Uh, as you stare at the control hub, a sinking thought dr uh, dawns on you. This isn't just any electrical malfunction. The control hub must be leaking dangerous radiation that could, at worst, lay you low for an entire day. The radiation field is small, however, and beyond it you see a hallway that curves deeper into the corridor as well as a hallway that exits to your east. You could easily try to skirt the radiation and move on. So let's just draw in just entryways there and there. So our options are, whoops, uh, if you choose to enter the radiation field and examine the control hub, go to entry number 13. If you choose to skirt around the radiation field, you can move deeper into the corridor, go to entry number 6 uh, to enter the curved hallway. Go to entry 5 to enter the eastern hallway. Uh, th to go back to the beginning of the corridor, go to entry number 3, which is the one that we just uh, completed. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because this is going to be the last thing that I do, um, I don't want to go any further and potentially spoil too, too much, so I'm going to choose to enter the radiation field and examine the control hub, which has me going to entry number 13, and there's, I think, 20-some-odd uh, entries, so there's still a lot of stuff that I haven't covered, but I think this is where I'm going to cut it off. So I'm in uh, number 13 here. Uh, says, squinting across the yellow glow of radiation, you slink up to the control hub. It takes only a few seconds to realize the systems are damaged. You can't even tell that what the hub once controlled or where those systems are based. Suddenly, a wave of nausea strikes and your balance wavers. The radiation has started to affect you, and you might pay a terrible price. Uh, so it says, you have encountered a hazard. Since you've stepped and lingered in the area of radiation, uh, caused in this case by a malfunctioning piece of technology, you now suffer the negative bodily effects it causes. You take 2d4 damage. So let's just roll that first. So I still have my full um, 14 hit points. So I take uh, 3 and 1. So I take 4 total. So I'm reduced from 14 down to 10.
Uh, additionally, you must try to resist the radiation's further effects. This attempt is represented by a saving throw. To attempt a saving throw against radiation, roll a d20 and add 3. If your target is greater than or equal to the difficulty class, or DC for abbreviation, of the hazard, you avoid more danger. The DC of the radiation is 15, so I have to get a 15 or total with a plus 3. I need to roll 12 or better. Uh, your saving th if your saving throw uh, is successful, and or sorry, uh, if your if your total is 15 or greater, your saving throw is successful and you suffer no further effects from the radiation. However, if it's less than 15, you gain the hampered condition. This means that you take a negative two penalty to all future attack rolls, saving throws, and skill checks. If you gain the hampered condition from the radiation, write hampered negative two on scratch paper, <laughs> and apply these penalties to appropriate rolls for the rest of the adventure. You have this condition until you rest for eight hours. Of course, you can leave the corridor to rest for eight hours and return later, though if you do so, you must start the adventure over. All right, so let's just go ahead and uh, make that saving throw. And like I said, this is probably where I'm going to leave it off. Uh, so I need to roll 12 or higher. Wow. I might have to use this dice next time I run a game. That is uh, the third 17 I've rolled for my character. So I don't suffer any more negative effects. And then it just gives us some more options here. So, um, I can go, so if, uh, to move deeper into the corridor and enter the curved hallway beyond, go to entry six. To enter the eastern hallway, go to entry five. To go back toward the beginning of the corridor, go to entry three. Uh, to rest for eight hours and start this adventure over, go to entry one. And if that radiation just so happened to have killed me, or brought me down to zero, I go to entry number 10. So that's basically where I'm going to leave it. I'm not gonna go any further because I don't really wanna spoil any more of the adventure. So that was basically just the first couple of options that I had, and uh, I think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I think it also serves as a pretty good tutorial as well, if you're new. I mean, for someone who's been playing RPGs for 20 years um, and playing the D20 system for almost 20 years as well, I guess, for, for 19 years. Uh, wow. Um, I already know how, you know, those mechanics work, but for people who are new or maybe familiar with other systems, it's a really good uh, tutorial. I think it works really, really well. And if you're brand new to RPGs, it still gives you, like, everything that you need, and it spells it out very, very clearly for you. So I think it's just a really cool idea overall, and... Uh, I might see, I might, you know, pick this up um, at some other point, probably not on camera because like I said, I don't want to spoil it, and just see how the rest of the adventure goes. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you thought of the Choose Your Own Adventure, at least the first little bit that we got. Uh, we got to fight a space goblin, and then we entered a radiation field. Probably not the smartest adventurer uh, ever, unfortunately, but still a lot of fun anyway. Uh, I just want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.